Hi, so um, my name is Megan Atavli. I'm the CEO of a company called Lumo Play. We've designed an interactive projector um, that allows children to create a lot of those cinematic augmented experiences um, that you see in malls and in uh, retail environments and at trade shows and in theme parks um, in, their, in their own homes. Uh, and I guess I thought this was going to be a panel, so I didn't actually like put together a slideshow or anything. So I, I thought what I might do is tell you how we got to this point and some of the problems that we had to solve along the way. Because the biggest challenge in providing these kinds of experiences in the home is, is really the cost. Um, you can, if you have the budget to deck out an entire cave with 3D projectors, then you can create these really magical experiences, but you can't take them home with you. And you certainly can't give children the tools to create their own environments. And that's something that's really, really important to us. So um, one of the first things, uh, first of all, I'm like a huge projector nerd. So everything I do has projectors in it. Um, one of the first installations that we ever did using projectors was uh, an interactive wall that was themed around Alice in Wonderland. And this was pre-Twitter, pre-Facebook. We were just using SMS texts to trigger different parts of the story um, and giving away prizes. And it was a party we threw for our friends. This had nothing to do, we didn't even have a business model. We didn't even have a business. We were just doing this for fun. And um, a girl that we knew showed up at this party, took this video, put it online, and basically, uh, we started getting calls from all around the world saying, can you come and do this at our events? And that's how our, our entire company started, was with this one party. Um, and we learned a whole bunch of things when we were doing this. One is uh, don't use your personal phone number for a party. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I had to get another phone number. Um, the other was if you have an event where there's a phone number that triggers things on the wall, then people will actually um, call their friends outside of the party and engage with them through the wall. So people were like getting their friends to call, make things happen, taking pictures, sending them back to their friends. Um, and we ended up having hundreds and hundreds of phone numbers on our record. Um, this was a, a little bit later when we started working with, with interactive projections. Uh, so this is a motion reactive robot, robot that we developed. Somebody asked us to put a robot inside this car that would look at people when they walked up to the car. And our choice was build a robot, which we didn't know how to do, or cut the shape of a robot out of wax paper and hang it from fishing lines and then rear project on it and make it motion reactive, which was obviously a lot more cost effective, but it also taught us that it's really cheap to do something that looks like a holographic effect. Um, and especially if you can control the point of view of the audience. Um, that's pretty boring, that's just, this one's awesome. So <laughs> uh, one of the things that we also did was we used projectors to turn the elevators into um, a subway. So you'll notice the elevators stop, or the subway stops. So the way we did this was we put RFID sensors inside the elevator shaft without telling the art gallery what we were doing, which is a bad idea because if they decide to use the elevator when you're in there, it's really scary. Um, <laughs> but it all worked and it was all, it triggered the sounds, it told you to mind the gap as you were getting off. So this, this, was, this was all stuff that we sort of like learned on the go as we were doing it. And I'm just gonna interrupt myself really quickly to answer the four people that keep asking about business models. We didn't have one at this point, but we learned really quickly within this first year that what we needed to do was take the software we were developing, put it online and make it available to AV installers all over the world who wanted to do stuff like this. And that's how we made our money. So we have an online platform with a lot of this software available online and you can just go buy the software and put the systems together yourself. So that's our business model. I think I just, yeah, okay, so, um, this guy, uh, when we put that software online, we started, we expected that educators were gonna be our biggest market. And educators were definitely the most um, active emailers. We got a lot of people call, calling and writing and stuff from schools. And they were talking about how useful this software would be with children who have autism, with children who have mo mobility issues. Um, so we started developing a template system, which was probably like a bit backwards from what a lot of people who develop games will do, uh, to allow kids to make their own games. So kids and teachers and all kinds of people were making games and submitting them to our platform. And um, that's sort of like how we learned what kind of games people wanted to make. So that was the way we solved that problem. 
these are some kids we tested on for a long time. This was a game where they had to stand perfectly still. <laughs> um, they're very active children. Uh, another long test that we did in terms of figuring out how to allow children to make their own content in a way that was relevant and meaningful to them, we did in partnership with uh, APTN, which is the Canadian Aboriginal Television Network. Um, we went into classrooms and had kids design their own spirit animals and then came up with this really simple system. Again, we sold this, the software online. Um, this was just after the Kinect came out. And it allowed kids to do like a head and hand replacement with a background extraction and they turned into whatever spirit animal they wanted to be and it told them a little bit about that spirit animal. That all kind of led to this huge culmination of an interactive installation called Impossible Animals, which, um, that's me, um, <laughs> which uh, allowed children to draw on an egg, scan it in, and turn it into a 3D object that they could interact with. And this kind of led to um, people, a lot of people, because this was like touring museums, uh, a lot of people contacting us and saying, how do we do this in our homes? So what we ended up doing was we designed a system that was a really simple, super, super inexpensive LED projector with a really small processor that could see actual objects, that could see motion, that could do gesture, and was affordable enough to be used in the home. And now we've uh, raised the money that we need on Indiegogo and we're about to bring it to market. So that's, that's basically like how we got to what we made today. Any questions? <laughs> yeah. Sell to um, commercial place. Sell to uh, like the fellow that was here earlier at theme parks, and then use the money to build something cool. <laughs> Thank you, Megan. <laughs>